Next, uh, we welcome Dr. Kathy, oh, sorry, Professor Kathy, uh, Jackie Curtis, um, who is the Executive Director of Mind Gardens Neuroscience Network. She's also the clinical lead for youth mental health, Southeastern Sydney Local Health District, and co-joint professor of the, with the discipline of psychiatry and mental health in University of New South Wales. She's worked with young people experiencing psychosis and emerging mental health disorders in public mental health services. She has a long-standing interest in the physical health of people with, uh, living with psychosis. Professor Curtis's clinical research has had uh, strong research translation implications, influencing clinical practice, health service delivery, policy and guidelines in mental health services locally, nationally and internationally. She co-founded the international group uh, concerned with physical health in young people experiencing psychosis in 2010, which she still co-chairs. She's now auspiced by the International Early Psychosis, uh, sorry, this initiative is now auspiced by the International Early Psychosis Association. Professor Curtis is regularly invited to speak uh, nationally and internationally on youth mental health and physical health comorbidities, comorbidities uh, and was invited to be part of the WHO guideline development group for physical health in people experiencing severe mental illness. Jackie's also this year's recipient of the Margaret Tobin Award. And uh, this award is made to the RANZCP Fellow who has made the most significant contribution to administrative psychiatry in Australia and Aotearoa, New Zealand over the preceding five years. Congratulations, Jackie. Please welcome Professor Jackie Curtis. Thank you very much, um, Dave, for the introduction and um, very much uh, a huge thank you um, to Minister Jackson for the fantastically inspiring um, introduction to the topic and also for the support from the New South Wales Government um, of the work that we're doing, but more broadly of the mental health initiatives. Um, it's really great to have you here today and introducing day two. Um, it's been a real privilege to be at the Equally Well conference and very much um, gratitude to um, the organisers for um, inviting um, me to present and for the opportunity to launch the guidelines um, that we're going to launch today. So. Um, I did also want to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the lands uh, um, that we meet, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, and pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging and also extend that respect and uh, welcome to any um, Aboriginal people here today or online. Um, and the other important thing to acknowledge is the, um, is the experience of those who have got lived and living experience of mental health, drug and alcohol issues and, and suicidal um, issues and their carers, kin and family. As part of that acknowledgement, um, I really just wanted to pay a particular special tribute to um, a a colleague and someone who's been very influential for myself personally, but also for many others um, in this room, and that is Stephanie Webster, who we very sadly lost very um, recently. And Stephanie has had a, a profound effect on me personally and the work um, that we've done, but very much guided um, the thinking around the, um, I guess, the voice of the lived experience inside of the work that we've done. And um, I just um, want to just express my condolences to her family, her friends, her colleagues, but also acknowledge the incredible advocacy that Stephanie has contributed, both as a person with lived experience and then later as a researcher as well. So I just want to actually um, think of attributing this particular presentation uh, to Stephanie today. Um, so with that, I will go ahead and actually do the presentation. Oh, that's nice and big. So <laughs> I've got the opportunity to, on behalf of the broader Keeping the Body and Mind Gardens team, to present these new resources today. And very excited about being able to do that. Um, <clears throat> it's really the launch today is really part of a body of work that we've been doing for the last 20 plus years. So it's not just a day 
of something produced and then see you later, here's a nice resource. This is something that we've been doing as part of a, a bigger program of work. This is an example, I'm just, I'm not going to go through any details about it, but it's been a whole lot of work over a long period of time. One element of that work has been this, um, the positive cardiometabolic health resource, which we originally developed in 2010 and then updated in 2011, funded through um, one of the institutes, um, at, uh, which is now known as HETI. Now that was a little resource Resource we did for clinicians and I'll show you where that's come to and wh why we've res um, updated that today. And what that led to, the body of work, was the um, firstly the Keeping the Body and Mind program which is hosted by South East and Sydney Local Health District and I'll share a bit more about that later and then more recently adding that to Mind Gardens to actually develop the Keeping the Body and Mind Gardens uh, bigger program of work. So this is the, the sort of nature and the background of what's been going on as to where we're up to and why we're doing this launch today. We um, have had to update this resource and actually think about things again because the landscape of this work has really changed over these last 15, 20 years and some of the ways it's changed has been the clinical landscape. So I have come from a clinical um, background, I might seem like an expert and doing a lot of research sorts of things but that's where it all originated from. So the work in the clinical landscape and the evidence for that has increased enormously. The actual evidence itself, the published literature, the huge number of studies on this now has changed enormously enormously over these last 20 years so that there's no question about this life expectancy gap and what we need to do about it, no question at all. And on top of that, there's been um, guidelines and there's been um, consensus statements. So equally well is, is noted there in that, but WHO, um, our Healthy Active Lives um, Declaration as well, New South Wales Health Guidelines, there's been lots of evidence and, and um, change in this time, which is really heartening. What is Mind Gardens? Just in a sort of one line, because maybe, maybe many of you haven't heard about it, it's a partnership between these four organisations, this um, bringing together and leveraging the strengths of these four organisations in order to change the way that mental health, drug and alcohol and neurological healthcare services are designed and delivered, but really bringing together lived experience at the centre of that to um, bring the lived experience voice through clinical work and research to translate into better outcomes. That's what Mind Gardens is about, and I'm very um, pleased to be able to lead that and actually have the Keeping the Body and Mind program central as a flagship in that. What we've done in that work is actually try to influence at multiple levels. So yes, the translational research is important, but so are um, education and training. We've had um, really great uh, relationships, partnerships with New South Wales Health, with um, other um, governments and, and states as well, but, uh, but New South Wales Health and the Mental Health Commission, which I'll speak about in a moment, um, have really supported us and enabled us to, to be able to spread the word beyond the local. Um, and the cons consumer co-productions were central to all that we do. So with that background, I am now going to introduce and very excitedly introduce our launch of our 2023 clinician um, and consumer resources. Um, really, this would not have been possible without the support of the New South Wales Mental Health Commission and Catherine Lowry being here is wonderful, so I can say this directly to your face. We've had lots of support over the years um, to do a whole range of things, but this update has been possible because of the generous um, funding from New South Wales Mental Health Commission and um, we're proud to be able to launch this in a shared way today. So, you've got a whole lot of resources on your desks. Each one of you should have these three um, resources, but all available online, freely downloadable uh, across, um, uh, and not just these, there are more resources than this, but these are the ones we're sharing with you today. So, these, are, um, these resources have been co-designed. They've um, been digitalised updated from what we've previously developed, but with the latest evidence and new things there as well. We've had um, uh, the really great fortune of the, of the, so I'm presenting this, but really um, I just, a big shout out to you, Patrick Gould, and also Andrew Watkins, who've been 
who's Andrew's moved somewhere. Um, <laughs> oh, there you are. You were over there before. Um, who really um, led the project and um, made it come to fruition. So a uh, huge shout out. You should be up here doing the talk today. I tried to convince you, but they said no. Um, okay, so we've had um, the just to give you an overview of how the resources have been um, developed and what um, really we're focusing on Sorry. <clears throat> is that we set up steering groups with experts across um, both Australia and internationally, but also experts across disciplines, so clinicians, researchers, lived experience, um, carers, consumers, to actually bring this together. So it was a joint effort. It's been over a year in, in the making of um, what we're showing you today. Um, the, there's been co-design workshop for some of the modules, testing and user feedback, and lived experience review of all the modules. Oh, and that's um, not come across um, so easily, that arrow, but basically there's a digitalised version um, that, with additional in information to help the clinical decision making. So what um, are these resources about? This one's the um, adult um, cardiometabolic health algorithm. So what we've done with this is that there are, well, not only the adult one, there's three new algorithms. So these are the ones on your desk. They're all available once you go to the QR code or, or um, on our Mind Gardens website. We've got the adult positive cardiometabolic health algorithm updated and we've got the adolescent one and we've got a brand new tobacco treatment one. So I'll share that in a moment. What is a positive cardiometabolic health resource? Well, basically this was a clinician guide that we developed in 2010 initially as a registrar training exercise and that's um, been something that's then been updated. Um, and the central motto of this algorithm originally was don't just screen intervene. It's no point just screening and screening people to death. Screening is great and important and central, but we actually have to do interventions, not just screening. And the guidelines to help clinicians as to what to do are what this is all about because there wasn't guidelines like this before. And just to say that these original guidelines, um, to give a flavour of what's happened to them, just to um, share, this was the original guideline, it then got picked up by the UK and it's been translated across in nine different countries, um, adapted for use in people with intellectual disabilities. And this has been a, 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 an auto-generated thing. People have come to us saying, this looks really useful, how can we do think something different? So this has had a life of its own and we're very proud of that. This is the... A Leicester adaptation, the 2023 update. We co-launched this internationally at a conference last week in Switzerland. Uh, this, this version, the UK version, has um, been rolled out across the country, uh, across all psychiatrists, across general practitioners. And I'm putting this in there because literally we had a co-launch pretty much online, um, a race to the finish, competitive altruism, which country will do it first. Um, and we pretty much did it the same day because we work so well together. But the important part of this is that the UK algorithm version, which is very similar, and you'll see the styles that are very similar, has been endorsed by the College of Psychiatrists, the College of GPs, College of Surgeons, um, Equally well UK, um, that's um, yeah. what we'd like to do here too, and a whole range of other organisations, Public Health England, NHS England. So this has had a major impact on policy and um, guidelines and practice in the UK. Okay, so this is ours. I'm not going to go through detail of it except to say that it looks a bit like our original one except much more fancy design with digital um, support and a great deal of support from Patrick Gould. Um, um, and we um, have got... It's an interactive version online where you can actually click on um, hyperlinks to get you to more information and the digital version, which is coming soon, will also have the um, ability for you to put in actual numbers and clinicians to put in numbers and then for a, an output that will be able to be put into the electronic medical records as well. So watch this space. The, it really helps guide which, in, which um, issues to put, to concentrate on for anybody who's been prescribed any antipsychotic medications or any psychotropic medications and it helps to guide what to look for how to address it, so actually tackling the lifestyle interventions as well as medication, medication, uh, medication interventions where relevant and then acting to get um, someone into the green zone, so working together with the consumer to actually um, improve and in the prevention area as well as the intervention area um, 
all the uh, physical health comorbidities. So that's the guide in a, on the front cover. On the back, it really explains step by step, colour matched with the front about what to do, how often to screen. Um, and this is all based on evidence-based guidelines. There's actual how to prescribe the various recommended um, potential option treatments. It's all about shared decision making. So you're doing that with the person um, in, um, and their families in a, in a very collaborative way. But there's also a guide for clinicians so that they know what to be saying. And also the expectation of the consumer should be that the clinician knows what they're doing. Um, and this helps to actually pull the evidence together on a very simple double-sided sheet of paper. This is the adolescent version, acknowledging that there are different cutoffs and guidelines uh, for young people. So that that's all been done with an expert group, including young uh, uh, paediatricians and, and um, other experts, endocrinologists, in, who are familiar with this age range. Um, that's the back of it again, just giving you the flavour of it today. And we're very excited, some of us very, very excited. This has come, taken years to come to fruition, the tobacco treatment framework. It's brand new. Um, it's a very similar guide in the um, uh, that it, it really helps guide clinicians, but it also helps so mental health clinicians, general practitioners on what to do with someone who is um, a tobacco smoker or it you know, will become a vaping issue too, and how to address the tobacco issue in someone who's got lived experience of mental health issues and is on psychotropic medications. So looks very busy and you've got it in front of you as well, but it's got a series of, um, you know, guidelines and pathways, including behavioural support, pharmacological support, as well as assessment, how to do assessments and what to um, expect from the potential for treatment. Because this is not something that should be separated, um, as Minister Jackson said, we're not just mind and body separately or physical health, mental health doing separate things. We as mental health clinicians need to be able to focus on the important things um, that are uh, affecting um, consumers, including tobacco, um, which is one of the major drivers of the um, premature mortality in people living with mental health issues. How do we do it? This is a guide, um, including how you deal with psychotropic medications, and that's the back of it. Again, it's a lot more busy than the other um, ones in some ways because it is a little more complicated around some of the pathways and how to use the medications to intervene here, but this is um, evidence-based and we're very proud of it and hoping it's going to be useful to the community. We've also developed some video training resources. These are all online, um, for especially for nutrition, physical activity and tobacco treatment. So you'll be able to see that. These are clinician training videos. And we've updated our modules for consumers that we've developed from the Keeping the Body and Mind program originally years ago. We've used the expertise of the Keeping the Body and Mind program. We've developed 17 modules. They're all freely available, downloadable for clinicians to work with consumers or for um, people working in the um, community managed sector to uh, or a carer working with a consumer. So that's all guidelines that can be used. You don't have to be an expert in um, exercise or diet or sleep hygiene or anything to use these modules. It's a guided um, uh, lifestyle module that we, we hope will be also something adding to the literature. Th these are a bit more details about the types of um, the 17. Sorry, that's gone in its translation across um, the portal. That's gone funny with the slides. Never mind. Um, Okay, so there's also a brand new set of um, resources and I think, I'm not sure if Vicky Langham is somewhere in the audience, but she was certainly here yesterday. Yes, oh, great. And this has been something that um, Vicky from Nimai National and um, University of Melbourne have worked together with us. They've been doing this uh, oral health um, resource for some time and they've partnered with us in Mind Gardens to actually be able to launch this as well. And this is a guide, another important area that's been neglected previously. So have a look at this on our website as well. It's the summary of the package that we've been that we're launching today. Um, you can use a QR code to get to it. Obviously, it's on the QR codes also on the uh, resources you got physically, but those online might like to look at it this way. But that's not the end of the story. There's so much more work to be done. There's new targets for raising awareness. Um, and sorry, raise, uh, new target areas and raising expectations. I think we've got to raise expectations so that consumers and their families can actually say, uh, here's what I want, here's what I need. They can go to their clinicians, their support workers, 
um, their GPs and say, I want this, why aren't I getting this? And that's part of what we are working on together. Um, he, just a shout out to some of the um, amazing new um, initiatives that are going on. Uh, we've got the vaccination inequity um, big project that um, Patrick Gould has been leading and, and equally well have supported in the global action. Um, Patrick spoke about that yesterday a few times in different settings. Uh, and that's something that's really important to watch out for. Um, um, Simon Rosenbaum, who's speaking uh, after the morning break, is here as well and part of our bigger team um, and is working on a major project looking and which is supported by New South Wales Health as well, looking at um, addressing physical health disparities in people if, of refugee backgrounds and asylum seeker backgrounds, which is amazing and you may hear about that later. And primary care, um, keeping the body in mind in primary care is actually looking at people who aren't in the mental health system through the local health districts but um, are in primary care. So there's all these new things that to, to be done. Um, and we are coming to the end. Um, you can never say thank you to enough people and um, this slide's an attempt to do that um, in some ways. But I really, um, uh, also, uh, the originators of the algorithm, Cathy Samaras and um, Hannah Newell, I've got to, to say that we really created this out of nothing and, and very little funding and now it's become something that's really meaningful. We did not think that that was the case at the time we developed this resource for trainees um, and uh, multiple colleagues um, around um, the place. I just want in um, the middle and those of you who um, knew um, David Pierce, he's also someone I, I want to pay enormous tribute to and thank for the possibility of this um, happening. David was the executive director of mental health and, and certainly a major mentor and leader in, in um uh, in this body of work, but for me personally as well. And, and sadly, David passed away last year um, and really um, his vision has led to the possibility of this. It's a collaborative approach, but a special uh, tribute as well to David. Uh, to my Mind Gardens team, many of whom are here, a huge shout out and thank you to the lived experience um, and voices of our teams who've helped us with this. Patrick and Andrew for thank you, thanking you for this particular resource. And really, we are working together um, it's a work in progress. Thank you so much for listening. We should do this together. Um, that's what this collective, collective active um, collaboration is about. What we've got is I've hopefully shown you a body of work, a suite of resources to add to the collective action and to add to the equally well ecosystem. Thank you very much. Hands are still frozen. That's right. <laughs> Thank you very much, Professor Curtis. That's amazing. It's um, it's really great to, and encouraging to see the body of work that's still being developed and launched as we go. Um, I'm really sure this resource will make a huge, enormous difference for people.